I'm Dr. Jonathan Salo. I'm a GI cancer surgeon. Esophageal cancer can cause difficulty with swallowing, which can limit your body's ability to take in the nutrients that you need in order to keep you healthy during your cancer treatment. In this video, you'll learn about the essential building blocks for good nutrition, protein supplements, and feeding tubes. There are four main nutritional building blocks, carbohydrates, fats, micronutrients, and protein. Carbohydrates are important for energy. There are many different kinds of carbohydrates. There are sugars, which make food taste sweet, but are also hard on your liver and pancreas. There are starches, which also provide a source of energy, but are easy on your system. Starches are large molecules made up of many small sugar molecules. Fats are another category of nutrients. Fats make our food taste better and are important in small quantities in rebuilding tissues. The average American diet, however, has more fat than most people need. Micronutrients are the vitamins and minerals your body needs to keep functioning smoothly. A daily vitamin supplement is generally enough for most people. In some cases, your doctor may recommend iron supplementation, but only if your iron levels are low. Protein is the fourth category. Protein is an essential building block of tissue in your body, especially your muscles. If you don't have enough protein in your diet, you can lose muscle mass which can result in weakness and fatigue. Protein is found in meats, fish, eggs, nuts, and beans. Your dietitian can give you a more precise estimate, but in general, the average woman needs about 60 grams of protein a day, and the average man needs about 75 grams of protein a day. For most people with esophageal cancer, however, eating meat can be difficult. Because of this, adequate protein intake is the most common nutritional problem for patients with esophageal cancer. For patients who have difficulty eating, we recommend protein supplements to make certain that they have enough protein to stay healthy. When we talk about protein supplements, we'll talk about two different categories. One is protein shakes, and the other is meal replacements. Protein shakes contain protein and flavoring and may contain micronutrients, but don't tend to contain much in the way of carbohydrates or fat. Here are some examples of protein shakes. Some examples of protein shakes are Premier Protein or Pure Protein. Meal replacements are supplements that contain protein as well as carbohydrates, either in the form of sugars or dietary fiber, along with fats. Here are some examples of meal replacements. Your dietitian will help you decide whether a protein shake or a meal replacement is best for you, but for most patients who are able to take at least some other food, protein shakes taste better, are usually more palatable. Bear in mind, however, that the average woman needs 60 grams of protein a day, the average man needs 75 grams of protein a day. So make sure you read the labels to ensure that you're getting enough protein in a day. For most patients with esophageal cancer who have difficulty eating, things can get worse during their esophageal cancer therapy. The reason is that the most common initial therapy for esophageal cancer is chemotherapy and radiation. Chemotherapy can in some cases tend to depress your appetite. Radiation can lead to a temporary sunburn on the inside of the esophagus, known as radiation esophagitis. This usually gets better after the radiation ends, but during the radiation, it can make it more difficult to swallow. One of the questions you'll want to address with your esophageal cancer care team is whether or not you need a feeding tube to help you with your nutrition during cancer treatment. Your dietitian and your physicians will evaluate your situation and make a recommendation. Let's take a look at some of the options. A gastrostomy tube is placed into the stomach by a surgical procedure. Feedings can be administered with a syringe. A gastrostomy tube still allows you to eat as much normally as you would like. A jejunostomy tube is placed into the jejunum, or the first portion of the small intestine, by a surgical procedure. Feedings require a pump, which is generally administered overnight and takes 12 to 16 hours. A jejunostomy tube still allows you to eat as much normally as you would like. The decision between a gastrostomy tube and a jejunostomy tube can be a little complicated, but here are some general principles. For those with stomach cancer who need supplemental feedings, a jejunostomy tube is required. For patients who have had surgery on the esophagus, a jejunostomy tube is frequently used after surgery. For patients with esophageal cancer who are undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy, either a gastrostomy tube or a jejunostomy tube can be used depending upon whether or not surgery on the esophagus is anticipated. This is a little more complicated decision that generally requires your care team and your surgeon to make a coordinated decision. I hope you found this video helpful. 
Feel free to subscribe in order to be notified about new videos. If you have comments or some questions or suggestions for other videos, please leave a comment below. In future videos, we'll describe details about the gastrostomy tube and the jejunostomy tube.